What's up, everybody? It's Bobby with Tech360.tv. It's another great day to be in the studio because of what I got in my hands. I'm loving all this full frame mirrorless magic. Yes, indeed, we've got the Canon EOS R. Get a sound R like that, it gives it more, more of a manly sound because it just, I like the name EOS R. Big thanks to Canon Singapore. We've got this for a few hours. We were heads off to Japan, but I want to give you a hands-on impression of what I think about just using it for, you know, a couple hours, shooting with it, my thoughts on the ergonomics and so forth. So let's get down to it. Let's talk about the design. Now, the design, it has a very Canon DSLR look to it, okay? They really didn't differentiate, let's say, from the Canon 60 Mark II, which we have in the studio, by the way. But it is a bit more minimalist, sleeker. Uh, it's not as wide as the DSLR, but it still has that same kind of heft in a way. But the grip, Canon really did well with this grip. Oh yeah, I mean, you know other ones, the pinky's hanging off, doesn't know where to go. Canon thought about the pinky. The pinky's all covered. Four fingers, just grip it like, mm. That sounds a little bit bad, but you know what I'm talking about. Build quality though, it feels very, very solid. I mean, when I saw the images, I was thinking, is this gonna be a bit plasticky? But no, it's not. I mean, there are, of course there are plastic bits on it, but this magnesium alloy build to it, it feels really sturdy. And there's a lot of weight to this, especially with this 24 to 105 kit lens. It's a weighty camera. So if you're looking for something light, I, maybe the 24 105 wouldn't be the choice. Maybe you have to do something with a, maybe a wider angle, a 1635 or something like that. But with this kit, you're gonna feel some weight. What else about it? You're gonna notice there's a different layout of buttons than you're probably used to on the Canon DSLRs. We'll compare it to the 60 Mark II since we have that in the studio. Near the grip, there's a lot of functionality with buttons that don't have a lot of labels and dials and it's going to be a learning curve. Control with your forefinger and your thumb and you're gonna be doing a lot of that. So I would exercise these two fingers before you start because you're gonna have to be very good working the two dials and the buttons at the same time while holding the camera, okay? Not a problem, you'll get used to it, but it is a learning curve. On the left side, you've got all the ports, you've got USB-C, you've got your HDMI, mic, jacks, you've got charging, all that's there. On the back of it though, Canon's done some cool things here. You've got the swivel screen. Oh yes, it swivels, look at that. Swivelly, swivelly, swivelly. They're the only one that's doing it right now. Gotta give it to Canon for the mirrorless full frame system. They went swivelly. You also have this touch bar sort of control where you can customize it to be exposure, ISO, da 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 da. Uh, there's a lot of features in the menu. I tried it, I couldn't get it to work right away, but then again, this is a pre production model in terms of software. I mean, the hardware is final, of course, but the software is pre production, so. Uh, we'll wait for the updates because I think one's going coming up in Japan and when we get the camera back, we'll be doing a full review. So I don't want to say too much about that, but according to Canon, you'll be able to customize that and it works pretty well. Okay, let's talk about the lens design here because that's also been updated as well. It's a sleek, more modern design. Of course, you have the zoom capabilities here, then you have a customizable ring here. So it can be exposure, ISO, however you want to do that, you can customize that. This lens has image stabilization, not all lenses do. This one does because there's no IS in the body, okay? People are complaining about it, but it is what it is. Some people say you get better uh, picture quality without IS in the body, I don't know, but it is that way. So let's talk about the card slot for a second because that's what everybody's complaining about. Yes, it's one card slot, hasn't changed from the camera I got, the from anybody else got. It's one card slot, UHS-2. Okay, get the tears, wipe the tears away, let's move on. Let's talk about the LCD display on the top of the camera, which is nice because it shows you all your mode functionality and so forth. And if you notice, the camera's off, but I still see what mode I've left the camera in. This is actually quite good because sometimes we leave our camera off for a while or we forget and then we turn the camera on and like, oh no, I gotta change modes. Now you know what you're in, okay? Also another cool feature is this. Actually, it's one of my favorite features. Now, you notice on mirrorless cameras, you'll see the, the sensor in the back of it. Actually, Canon has brought the curtain down to protect the sensor and this even works with the battery out of it. So, I like that. Overall, good concept, good design, good functionality. Let's talk about the internals on this. You've got a 30.3 CMOS sensor, full frame sensor, dual pixel autofocus on this, 565, wait no, 5,655 user selected autofocus points. That's right, 5,655. I didn't test to see if there's all 5,655. That would take me a while, but I can tell you that just by moving uh, through touch focus and adjusting focus points, it covers pretty much the whole entire frame, so 
I'll take Canon's word for it. Let's move on in terms of how it performs in photos. Um, you know, I haven't shot with Canon in a while and I really forgot how beautiful the Canon colors are and you notice it right away as soon as you shoot with this uh, camera. The Canon colors that you see in the DSLR are right here inside this mirrorless system and they are beautiful, breathtaking. The images are sharp, great bokeh in, uh, from this lens. Um, it's very fast to autofocus, very, very fast. Decent in low light as well. I've shot some uh, photos up to 40,000 ISO. Of course, there's a lot of noise, a lot of grain, not a lot of sharpness to it, but it can shoot it. And if you want to use it at that, you can, but I set it to 6400 and I'm really happy with the usable images I get out of this. What you love about Canon before, you'll love in this camera right now. Let's talk about the EVF. Now the EVF is bright, it's, it's clear, it's sharp. 3.69 dots, um, you know, 3.69 megapixels, however you want to put it. No issues with it. I mean, is it class leading? No. I think that award still goes to Leica with ESL, but it's close, it's competitive with what we're seeing from Sony and Nikon, so no issues at all. You're not gonna have a problem with it. Images are sharp, you're really gonna see what you focus on. It's good to go. And speaking of the clarity of the EVF, I also wanna talk about what it's like to shoot pictures out of it because there is no blackout. That's right, there is no blackout when you shoot with this, at least from my experience of it so far. And that's always a good thing. Blackout, some people hate it, some people love it. It doesn't usually bother me, but it's nice not to have it. And you don't see it in the EOS R, so I do wanna give points to Canon for that as well. Overall, my conclusion on this is that it's a valiant effort from Canon. I really like it. It's durable, it's robust, feels really good in the hand. It is gonna be a workhorse for many people. Would I say this is gonna replace your 1DX Mark II? Maybe not but you never know what Canon has up their sleeve. I don't know, but you never know. They could come out with a, a more pro mirrorless version. But uh, I think Canon's on the right track with this and I can't wait to get it back from Japan and take it through its paces and give you the full review coming up in a few weeks time. So anyway, with that, leave us a comment suggestions below. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Until the next one, take care.